This is going to be our jerk bait. Hey Landon, look. Daddy's been working on your bait. We're just cutting the corners. Looking a little bit more refined here. Hey guys, welcome to another hot, humid, miserable day out here in the fish cave. Woo! But we are coming at you with more content. So, this month, September, is my son Landon's birthday month. September 16th, Landon turns two. So man, I have a two-year-old. Now today, the day that I'm starting this filming is the 13th. So, I will not have this done by Wednesday, by Landon's actual birthday. However, I wanted to do something special for him and give him something that has some sort of lasting value, not just a plastic toy from Target or, or a baby book or something like that, which are all great things. That's what he wants right now and, and it's important. Um, but I said, ah, let me make something that he can enjoy when he's a little bit older and he can kind of look back and say, hey, my dad did, did this for me. So I don't know, I figure, hey, what better thing than to make him his own special fishing lure? So for my second ever wooden lure build, I'm going to be making a lure for my son. And it's going to be just kind of like a little four and a half, four, four and a half inch jerk bait. Um, never made a jerk bait. The only bait I've ever made was this square bill crankbait here. So um, yeah, I think this is gonna be really special. It's gonna be really cool. And he'll be able to look back on this video, you know, well into the future, long after I'm gone, and say, hey, this is my dad making me something special for my second birthday. Or at least I hope he would do that. So let's see what we're gonna try and do. Okay, so there's what I'm thinking. Here is actually the spot where that uh, square bill that I just showed you was cut out before. So same block of basswood here. And this is going to be our jerk bait. So I'm thinking it's gonna be a really fun challenge and uh, I don't know what color scheme I want for it yet or any of that. You know, I, I have a long way to go obviously before I can even really think about that too much. You know, I just, I need to get, I need to turn this into an actual functioning jerk bait. So uh, yeah, here we go. Um, as you can see, I've just kinda, I just drew a straight line and kinda drew the design freehand around it just to give me a rough sketch. So I'm gonna get this cut out, then we'll take a look. We'll start uh, carving away at it, chamfering edges, sanding, and just kinda see if we can get something that we like. All right, it is 20 minutes later or so, and I have um, my basic shape cut out. I cut a little too low in the top there, so you can kinda see, um, got kinda inside the line. So I'll probably wind up bringing that whole edge, come on, focus. Probably wind up bringing that whole edge down a little bit. And I've kind of already started uh, with the uh, carving knife a little bit, just kind of cleaning up some rough spots and uh, need to sand that quite a bit. So yeah, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this thing in the vise and cut out the uh, lip slot now before it's a rounded bait. Last time I sanded and then cut this out last. And uh, I think I'll have a little bit better luck this time. So. That's sort of the basic shape of our jerk bait. And uh, you know, lots of, lots of sanding and polishing left to do. But uh, we're gonna get started here uh, right now. Uh-oh, SpaghettiO. Cut my thumb. Figured it would happen sooner or later. So, question of the day for this video. For all of you bait makers out there, what do you think is worse? A cut on your hand from a wood carving knife or a plastisol burn for all you soft plastic people. Ugh. I have to say the plastisol burn is definitely worse. Um, even a small one is worse than a small cut like this. But uh, interesting there. Curious to get y'all's thoughts in the comments below. So knife totally slipped and uh, yeah. I'll learn, hopefully, from that and not do it again next time. Hey, Landon, look. Daddy's been working on your bait. Yeah, we've made a few, um, <laughs> made, made, oh, oh, made a few steps off camera. 
we uh, just kind of took that rough cut out and we just sort of drew down the middle and kind of drew a basic shape and we've just kind of been um, chipping away at it to get it where it is. So yeah, I think he likes it. Good job, buddy. So yeah, next we're, uh, next we're basically just gonna chamfer these edges and uh, I'll film some of this part and, uh, and then we're gonna do lots of sanding and just <laughs> and try to get it as refined as possible. So if I ever get it back. All right, so we're just kind of chamfering some edges here, which is to say we're just cutting the corners off of the bait. So there you have it. So for example, in order to get this edge rounded, we first want to kind of cut any sharp corner off, just like that. Move that out of the way. So yeah, lighting's real dim here in my uh, living room area, so hopefully this remains in uh, somewhat focus. So yeah, th to me this is the fun part, is doing all the the carve aspects of it. I, I like the carving a lot. The sanding, not so much, right? But yeah, just kind of cutting these corners off here. You know, to, to me, this is enjoyable and it's where you really kind of get to see some of your bait really take shape. So this to me is the enjoyable part. So we will just kind of keep going here. Yeah. When I originally cut it out, I kind of dipped inside, oop, dipped inside my line there. So you'll see that looks very sloppy. Going to take a lot of sanding, but we'll kind of just chamfer right through that section. Had a bit, had a bit of a tear out right there, so that's not good. You okay, guys? My dog's over there playing, playing with Landon as we speak. So, you're okay, buddy. You need to get behind me. <laughs> he just hit the tripod. So anyway, this is kind of where we are, and we're going to chamfer this thing out completely and meet you guys back. All right, so we have our uh, jerk bait here pretty much chamfered on all edges. So now it's just time to do a little bit of sanding. So just like before, I'm just doing it manual. Just gonna do this till everything is nice and rounded. This is the part that is not so enjoyable, but it happens quickly uh, with this super, super uh, rough sandpaper. I mean, you can really shave some wood off fast. In fact, I kind of want to do this top section there just to try to even out that, uh, that spot where I just did not cut it evenly at all. Yeah, I mean, you can see how much wood this, this takes off. That's already uh, focused, jeez. Sorry about that, y'all. Lighting in here is tricky. It's just very dim room, but I like working at, at my table here, so. Any event, this is my life for the next, I don't know, 45 minutes or so until we get it more or less shaped like we want and then from there there will be a ton more fine sanding with much finer sandpaper but for right now we really really want to get all of these edges smoothed out and the bait rounded as a whole so you know that even includes the the bottom there sort of rounding that out so to speak which we will obviously do so yeah the fun part, you guys. And some more sanding, this time sort of on that back end. We'll just kind of be really trying to round out the tail section of this bait. Just sanding and spinning. I don't want it to have a whole lot of that sort of rectangular shape left that it had. So, you know, already it's just completely shaped differently than it was before with maybe about 10 minutes worth of sanding. I've got a lot of work to do here to, to, to try to taper these evenly. So 
that's going to be a problem spot, but we are coming right along. Quick update, looking a little bit more refined here. So, yeah, definitely uh, an interesting, interesting looking bait so far, but I think from the side profile, we can kind of see where things are going as far as a jerk bait uh, goes. So, yeah, we're just going to keep at it here with the sandpaper. And, uh, yeah, I think maybe 20, 25 more minutes, if I focus the whole time, I'll, uh, I'll have the shape at least that I want. All right, everybody, so it's the most wonderful time of the year. That is lip time. So this is sort of what I have come up with. Uh, that's not even I'm trying to trying to get that straight for you guys. So yeah, something like that. And what I'm going to do is kind of score this with um, with a razor blade this time. Instead of just going at it straight with the saw, I can pretty much score it and it will come out, I think, a lot easier. So that's kind of the hope anyhow. I need like a real box blade or like a, an actual box cutter knife. But this is what I have. So you can actually kind of cut the Lexan to an extent and uh, we'll also obviously have to do it up here on the top but that's going to be the size and shape of our lip so we're just going to kind of go with that yeah and uh, I think that will work just fine for a bait this size just kind of a quick look at the bait I've gotten it pretty much sanded to the point that I'm happy with um, yeah done done a lot of sand work on this thing so I think it's looking pretty good and uh, yeah can't wait to see this thing sort of come to life okay so I used the thinnest drill bit that I had which actually turned out to be the same exact diameter of uh, these little um, uh, pieces of hardware here for the eyes. So basically I pre-drilled just a little shallow hole just to get this started and now I'm just going to finish it just twisting it manually. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of super glue and twist this thing on in. This way we will have something that doesn't want to come out. So Try to do this left-handed. So anyway, before that sets, <laughs> there we go. There we go. Again, just barely getting it started. Just enough to seat that in there. And we're gonna do the same thing. Twist that in with a little bit of super glue. Okay, so there's what we have. And now we're just going to kind of give the whole thing a uh, sort of a light coat of super glue just to seal everything in. And uh, I haven't added the weight yet. We're going to do that um, after this uh, dries. So anyway, we're basically just going to drill out a hole here and a hole here and add a little bit of lead just to give this thing a little bit of weight. So, but for right now, just giving it a nice super glue coat. And uh, we'll meet you back when this is all done. Okay, welcome back. It is a few days later and we have put the uh, lip on. And because I kind of widened the uh, slot too much, 
I actually packed in some wood, just wood chips uh, left over from the saw to kind of fill in the gap. And uh, I've got the lip on pretty much exactly like I want it. So now we're just gonna fill up these holes with some lead and do some final sanding and then we're ready for some paint. So let's see what I've devised as a method to get lead into the bait. Okay, this will be silly. We're gonna take a lead bullet weight, okay? Just out of our regular tackle box. We're gonna heat the crap out of this spoon. I've already tested it with our, uh, we're gonna heat the crap out of it with the torch and try to dump it into the holes. So yeah, here goes nothing. It melts fast, melts pretty fast. Any second now. Like once it once it melts, it, it melts it melts quick. And there we go. Look at that. So that's how we're gonna get our uh, lead workable. Then we're just gonna pick up the bait and try to pour it into the hole. Okay, y'all. Let's see what happens here. Well, I got the shaky hands today. Look at that. Actually kind of worked. Ah, I'm gonna have to get it melted again. Beautiful. All right, time for a little bit of paint. So um, we have basically taped everything off. We have sanded down our lead and we're just gonna give it a nice opaque white base and we're gonna build some sort of pattern off of that hopefully I'm still not very good on the airbrush but uh, this will be some good practice and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this one I've put a little bit more effort into this one done a little bit more fine-tuned sanding and uh, so hopefully it just looks just a smidge better than my first one um, in terms of just overall finish uh, and fit and paint hopefully so uh, here we go all right, nice little base coat here of white. So there's kind of the contrast there. Get all this on the bottom real well. It's gonna be hard to cover up that lead. Problem is I poured the lead all the way up to the top so I couldn't really fill it in with anything to, uh, to get it completely smooth. So we will have to see what we can do there. Again, learning as we go. I need to like have somebody come to my shop and like show me how to do this. That'd be great. All right, now we're just gonna do sort of an orange belly. So here's what we have so far. Those two little holes don't look so good. Sorry, Landon. Daddy's still learning. Guess I should have drilled them out, then filled them in with something, and then sanded it again. But uh, we'll do that for your third birthday, buddy. All right. So we're just going to do an orange belly on this thing. Yeah. Okay, everybody. So, again, here's what we have. Orange to kind of yellow. So now, we're going to get some green up in here. We're basically just going to fill in this sort of line with green. Okay. Yeah, just like that. This green's trying to splatter on me a little bit. I might need to uh, mix a little bit more reducer in it. Stand by. Okay, yeah, so there's there's what I was able to get. You can see the orange kind of fading through the yellow into the green. 
Same on that side. Had a little bit of a hiccup there. I think that's a spot where I just didn't quite sand enough. You know, I, I tell you, this once you get paint on it, you uh, you learn real quick where you did not sand it well enough. It exposes all of your sanding uh, mistakes. So, any event, we're going to keep moving on. Okay, now for sort of a messy part. I'm going to stencil on, just with a cutout stencil, a few stripes for our perch. And, uh, and just kind of sort of do them in black a little bit here. Just enough to kind of get, get the stencil effect. Just like that. And we're gonna heat set. Heat set each individual one because I don't wanna screw it up. <laughs> I've come this far, and this actually doesn't look terrible so far. So now we're just kinda gonna go to the next one here and just kinda space them however we think they should be spaced. Not, uh, not too complicated. Let's see what happens. Alrighty. There you go. And we're basically just going to do that all the way down the bait. And then once we are done, we are going to kind of brush the top with black, which will kind of fill in the tops of these uh, stripes here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and finish out our uh, perch stripes, and, uh, and then we'll meet you back. All right, got it on both sides. Definitely got this side a little bit more even, but that's okay. Now we're just going to fill in the top. And there you go, it already, that just kind of brings the whole thing together, so to speak. Okay, yeah, and when you have some custom Jetson eyes, these are the same exact eyes as were on my first bait. And I went ahead and wrote Landon's name on it uh, in some very bad handwriting. My handwriting is actually worse than your doctor's handwriting. And uh, put this year's birthday for him. He was born on September 16th. He was born two years ago, but today's, or his birthday date this year was obviously 2020, everybody's favorite year. And uh, I'm actually like really happy with the way that this came out. So now we're, uh, we're just gonna kind of let the glue set on the eyes there. And uh, we're gonna brush this baby with epoxy and uh, we have a finished bait. All right, everybody, there's the finished product. So, do you like it, buddy? Say yes. <laughs> okay, everybody, so I actually went in to do a tank test and filled my bathtub up. However, because I put kind of such a long lip on it and weighted it down, whenever I kind of gave it a few, you know, just little jerks in the tub just to kind of see what it was going to do, it actually would just dive down and kind of hit the bottom of the tub sort of as soon as it was starting to have some action, right? So just because it was just bottoming out on the tub, I, you really couldn't tell what it's going to look like. So I actually don't, still don't know what this thing really is going to look like in the water, but you know, I knew it was going to be a fairly deep diving jerk bait, but uh, I just couldn't really do a tank test in the tub for it. And I, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to throw this thing in water. I kind of want to just keep it safe uh, for Mr. Landon. So I think I'm going to go inside and hang it where it's going to remain until he's old enough to use it. All right. It will not be disturbed now. It can sit there for years. 
that uh, horny toad that this fish was caught on has been there since 2006. So I definitely think we can keep that there for a good length of time. All right, everybody, we are gonna wrap this video up. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, you know, this was, this was a real personal lure build to me and um, what, what an awesome thing. So I hope Landon will be able to enjoy this bait for years to come. You know, just now, now the decision is, at what age do I let him throw this? Cause is he just gonna hang it in a tree and then it's gone? Ooh, you know, like I, I kinda wanna let him use it when he's ready, you know? That will lessen our chances of losing the lure before he's really had a chance to, uh, to try and catch a fish on it. So that'll be a tough decision to make, but I think we'll be okay. But um, anyway, Landon, I love you. This one's for you, buddy. And um, all of you out there who watched, thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and please leave me some comments below. Let me know what you like about the bait, maybe what you don't like about the bait. There's certainly tons of room for improvement. And um, you know, over the course of the two wooden baits that I've made, I've kind of been able to see some things along the way that, that I can improve on. So you know, hopefully we'll get to a high level at this sort of thing. Um, you know, it took me years to, to get to a high level at soft plastics. So uh, I know how tough the road can be to making good lures. So uh, I expect no lesser challenge here, but in any event, we're signing this one off and we'll catch you guys next time.